come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Welcome, ladies and germs, to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. You found us. Once again on the internet, we're coming to take over yes. your world. We're on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Google Play. Oh, is that new? That is new. And uh, tune in everywhere. Basically, hey, what we want you to do is go to one of these fine programs, click the subscribe button, or maybe you have already. Click the like button. Give us some love. Talk about us. Write a review. That's right. Give we a will comment. Keep the, the Freak suck. Show family going. And, and if I'll you tell wanna... you, you suck right back. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Because that's what we do to our fans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, and if, uh, suck, if you want to reach out and talk to us, you can get a hold of us on Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter, we're Sat Freak Show. And you can get a hold of us uh, via email, Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. I liked it better when you were at Sat Freak Showing the Twitter because it sounds cooler. You want me at, to do that? Yeah, I like start at Sat Freak that Show. Again. That yeah. sounds better. At Sat Freak Show on yep. Twitter. Uh, so these are the internet radio superstars Travis, Sean, Michaela. And I'm Colin, and tonight we watched a movie chosen by... Colin. And it was called The Monster Squad. Whoa. From the year 1987. And it's directed by a fellow named Fred Decker. What else did Fred Decker do on The Freak Show? Uh, This is terrible. That's why you're here, Colin. This is like two episodes ago. You chose him. He wrote House. Oh, well, no, the story... He didn't write House. Story the story Decker was wrote. credited, but yeah. I get it. Fred Decker, I think, wrote made two unheralded movies, underrated movies from the 1980s. He did The Monster Squad in 87, and before that in 86, he did a movie called Night of the Creeps, mm. which if you haven't seen that, you got to go check it out. That's the popular one. Is that popular? Uh, I mean, amongst like... I think more popular than Monster are. Squad. <laughs> yeah, you'd be surprised. They've had screenings of this yeah. where like people line up around the block and like we you know, know like, today how people like to like like the horror movies that know it like Halloween three and, <laughs> and Troll two. People just like to like the some people love this movie, Travis. I get it. Some I get people it. love it. I get it. <laughs> well, I've always said you fall into three categories. You're either a Goonie, an Explorer, or a Monster Squad. <laughs> Now I'm taking away Monster Squad because <laughs> Goonies and Explorers to me have more heart. Oh, see, I was on yeah. the other camp. I Damn. couldn't stand like the Goonies because it was that explains why you love this movie. Yeah, because I was the monster kid. I mean, like this one spoke to me where Goonies and Pirates really didn't. Explorers was the sci-fi one. You're still kind of a I never actually saw it. You're still kind of. A you never saw Explorers? No. Oh, it's magical. I think I've seen it once. It's coming to the. It's coming to I the free show. Him. Wait, I love but, it. So, but we're also saying that possibly to fully appreciate these movies, you need to be 12 years old. Well, definitely. I mean, it I, would impact you more. Definitely. Like, I feel like if I would have seen this when I was on, under 18, even it would have had some sort of lasting impact. It, I would have definitely preferred this to Goonies <laughs> as a kid. Definitely. If, it, if I would have seen this and had the option to see, Goon, see this, both this and Goonies, I would have definitely taken this over Goonies just, just for the monsters, if nothing else. Well, I think Travis is right though. It does yeah. fall into like, you're either. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I have the explorers is new to, you know, the argument that you threw it in. I usually hear it's either Goonies or, the monster squad, oh, but when you man. think about Rare those, Phoenix. at least, well, you'll have to help me out. Then. Is explorers? Does it also follow basically it's, the same story pattern? Is both like Monster Squad and Goonies to me are like virtually the same movie? Yeah, essentially at their core, they're the same movie. Definitely, right. it's just it's got better editing because you've mm-hmm. got. Uh, I mean, like I keep thinking of uh, what was the sloth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, is basically his Frankenstein. But, but, here's that's, Frankenstein. but that is, I'm mm-hmm. sorry, but that is these guys copying Goonies. That's not like, oh, these guys have like was Goonies eighty four. Goonies was, was like eighty five. Uh, yeah. Feels like it was eighty five. But like, I think this. I think the reason why this movie doesn't stand out the way Goonies and Explorers does is I. Wait, what are you talking about? Yeah, that's right. Oh, shit. St- but define standing out. Oh, you mean just the, in popular like in culture? Fans, yeah. popular yeah. culture. It's because this movie is talking down to its audience. Where Goonies and Explorer has kids that maybe act a little older for their age or a little bit, you know, more like hardcore or whatever the hell. You know, they curse and they might mm-hmm. smoke a cigarette or something like that. 
But that was showing how, like, well, kids are kind of like adults, too, when they're around each other. This movie, I think, is talking down to that audience. I think if you are 12 or whatever, it's being like, here's some monsters. Here's a movie just like The Goonies. <laughs> like, I don't think it has this. It's missing that heart to me because it is just trying to, like, we're going to do a Ghostbusters, Goonies with monsters. And what monsters can we get? Well, we can't do Freddy or Jason or Michael or whatever. I mean, well, we can't do Creature in the Black Lagoon. That's owned by Universal. Uh, I mean, we'll do the old like fifties monster, the forties monster guys. But those are all used by owned by Universal too, so we have to. But they're public domain. Yeah. So what? you can use Dracula, Frankenstein. They just call it Mummy. They don't say yeah. the name of the Mummy. They don't say you know. Yeah. But they get the Gill Man in there too, Gilman. and just wolf, and just the werewolf. They don't yeah. say it's not the Wolf Man. It's not Larry Talbot. It's just mm. a Wolf Man. Which one? So I mean, but again, I think that it, you is it based on which one you saw first? Because I saw this one first. I thought it did have the heart that you're talking about because it has the relationship between the little girl and the Frankenstein monster, and mm. you know, it's like this, every '80s movie has to end with the uh, the supernatural uh, hero or whatever, I guess it's the side character, but the hero being sucked off into, you know, something and having to say goodbye with the touching swell of, uh, you know, the 80s uh, full orchestra behind it. The right? scene, E.T. Da, da. and uh, the never-ending story. And- yeah. The scene that struck me is where I was like, oh, this is talking down its audience is when, well, I mean, we'll get to the, the, the facts later, but when they're talking to the scary German guy and he says that word and then that kid says, to the other kids, that means this. I'm just like, oh, I see. These are, you know, we're talking to dumb kids here. We got to, like, have one of the characters turn to the other kids and be like, that means this. Like, it was just, it was fucking stupid. Like, Goonies and Explorers doesn't have that talk down to the mm. audience. You know, they don't have, like, let me tell you what a word means, kids. No. You know? Maybe. You have one of your kid characters doing that to your audience in this. Like, you're too dumb. I know what you're talking about. And just, just the, like, the basic like story of this is like, I mean, the kids, I mean, they have all those characters down. They got the kids, they got this town, you know, they got a cop dad, you got, but then like, I think the actual monster story is not like, I mean, that seems like something they shot like in a day with just like, we, well, we just need Dracula by swamp. He just, ha ha and like lightning crashes. It's like, there's no reason for any of it. You mm. know what I mean? It's like shit just happens. Why does it, it happen is. in this town? Why does the creature from the black lagoon know right. about it? Or who sent him to steal Frankenstein? When did he, when did Dracula, say, you know, it's just like, he, right. The they coming did together not... story at the beginning is a little like, well, oh, okay. It's I actually like, got like quick. really hung up on that because like, the, the like wolf headed club that yeah. Dracula had, <laughs> like, which is clearly a reference to the original Wolfman. Mm. But I was like, wait, so this can do whatever he wants it to right. do? Like, Especially what's the mythology and the magic behind this? Right. Like, because there isn't any. No, it's Frank just, it's, like it's for it's, dumb kids. It's magic <laughs> of convenience to Dracula when he needs it. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, 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 it, like I was like, wait, when he starts getting the casket out of the water. I'm just like, how? Why yeah. can he do that? Yeah. I've never seen. Well, they don't even explain. Before. Like the beginning of the movie has a scroll that tells you about like all oh, Dracula. And darkness and how Van Helsing is dropping them and they blew it. You know, it was really funny. That, right. that should have like came like after that the backflash scene to like, you know, that'd be mm-hmm. funny if we saw the backflash scene, then the scroll of the like, blew or it. even if like the scroll stopped. They did the whole flashback scene. You cut back to the scroll and then it moves up real quick and it just goes. They blew it. You something know, like that. Well, because, I have like a thing against like any time a movie has to tell you at the beginning what right. the movie's actually about. Yeah. Then, like then they go and dramatize the scene that they just told you about. Right. right. What if there crawl. was more that they couldn't afford or they couldn't because clearly it's just like you don't you don't see how they blow it, quote unquote. Right. But you know, I, right. They, you just see a vortex open or whatever. Then the movie starts. Yes, I also then, don't understand that scene. In like, you get it later in what they're supposed to do, but just as an opening to the movie, mm-hmm. I don't understand what's going on. Is the vortex good or bad? Did they want this? Like, well, there's nothing there to get sucked up, really. Yeah, because I don't think you even see Van Helsing. No, you don't. Sucked up at the end of the day because they just cut away from it, yeah, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, they cut away from it. It's, it's and then, a and then it's, it's the just idea two that... guys on a plane, like, we're flying dead people or something. And then, like, Dracula I... appears. And you're like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on here? Like, how did Dracula come back into play? Well, it's the, uh, yeah. I mean, just for the how point of the convenience, and... right? They come oh, up yeah. with a plot that's, you know, like, the, the what the monster plot is. Is that there's uh, okay? This is it's dumb, but amulet. it's like it's kid stuff. 
It's oh, like, yeah. yeah, you've got an amulet that represents, it's condensed, what is it? It was condensed it's pure good. good. And pure every, good. And it's indestructible. <laughs> it's lazy, right? right. Which but I didn't get. I every it was evil. hundred years. I thought it was evil at first, at right? Because why does Dracula have it in his possession, you know, when oh, Van, Van Helsing, Helsing's house? No, but but at the opening, when Van Helsing oh, in the in, past, yeah, his, Dracula's Dracula castle. has the amulet or whatever it is, and for safekeeping, man, yeah. if it's like gonna destroy you, somehow, but it's like you so. Doesn't that mean there. Dracula could have like won what he's trying to do in this movie, like in a hundred yeah. years ago? That but he is didn't like, but because happened? they blew it. He just didn't do anything. Well, but no, but if because, they blew it, then Dracula would have just like like crushed whatever he was trying to do with that amulet. He would have just done if if if. Van Helsing blew it. That's why this movie does not explain. Like, well, somehow they had to somehow stop Dracula, but not permanently. And this movie does not bother with a story. <laughs> yeah, it's just like I mean, we're, not, we're on a plane with dead people. The There's thing a I got out of it was that the vortex opened and sucked somehow sucked all of our uh, 1800s and ta- or protagonists right. into right. limbo, and so they weren't able to complete the ritual in some way. So and funny. so now, in yeah, Which it and somehow, like a and Dracula me. wasn't <laughs> home. So he couldn't crush the amulet because yeah. the amulet's only uh, like it, it can only be destroyed at the stroke of midnight every once every years. hundred years. Yeah, which is perfect. <clears throat> so that's why <laughs> Dracula is back in play in 1987. But they blow. Like, I don't know if they blow it. He's always well, he, been in play. But he, yeah, but he's gonna. Well, the forces <laughs> of good have blown it. But Dracula wants to destroy the thing again. He only gets a chance every 100 years. But so how this does is he like lose him it? coming to if, America? Especially if Van Helsing gets sucked into the vortex, which you find out later. How did he? Van, how did he bring the? Uh, I know this movie that. is like. <laughs> this is. I think Logic this is where details. it's like. Oh, I'll call my friend Shane Black. <laughs> yeah. 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 Did we mention that Shane Black like Shane wrote Black. The, co-wrote this movie he with did. Fred Decker? But I think at this point, Shane Black was like 18 years old, right? Really? I mean, he sold Whoa. Lethal Weapon when he was like 21 or something uh, like that. I mean, it was really, you know, he was a, one of those uh, wonder, wonder kind? kinds. Yeah. Uh, what, the, the wonder what? kind. <laughs> the wonder the kind. Wonder kind. Wonder yeah. Kind. yeah. Yeah. But okay, so you're saying this movie takes place in 87, the year it was released. Mm-hmm. I would say that's debatable. I well, found the era confusing at best but like, some of it, it plays through the production design it's like it's it's 87 but in like an alternate universe where they're it's obsessed like, with the 50s still there was a lot of 50s influence this movie that, yeah, that drive-in like, like restaurant they went to yeah it was straight up out of the 50s yeah, and like they had the kid. The 80s, yeah. those places were no still it's true no, the, the kid had rolled existed. jeans yeah like the kid the, the, the way the rudy, yeah, or whatever yeah, they rudy was dressed or yeah. yeah 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 he was, was like greaser head to toe and like i get that like that kind of style especially like with the punk influence of the time yeah was the style but it was a little too on the nose for the 50s for me to believe it was like the 80s version maybe of that? It's just like, like, it's I like too people much. dressing like that. Maybe though. it's like the like Hollywood what, thing where they just figured, like, the Midwest is like 30 years behind. Right, right. yeah, yeah exactly. We're in California. Yeah. But you remember, like, The Outsiders in the 80s was like a thing. I mean, like, that. Right, 50s, but that movie took place in the 50s. I know, though. but oh, yeah, the I mean, fact yeah. that it was a thing in the 80s. I went to Misfits concerts where they dressed like The nostalgia still existed for it, yeah. Definitely. The greaser thing. Greaser punk. Because it's funny, actually, because 976 Evil, kind of the same thing, yeah. right? The badass cousin character in 976 Evil is kind of greaser-ish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe they just, Maybe it's just, know. like, shorthand for badass outsider. Yeah, we need know? shorthand. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, whatever. We need a lot of shorthand. The, yeah. uh, Marlon Brando, <laughs> That's Rebel. All, this whole movie shorthand. Rebel, <laughs> wild one, right? yeah. Cigarettes rolled up in the sleeve. And yeah. Whatnot. Yeah. So we don't know if, like... I mean, this is what stupid did Dracula like no like when I get above this longitude, I'll be directly above Van Helsing's like old town and drop <laughs> in there. It seemed like a mistake that he just woke up yeah. and dropped out of the plane. But then he's like, Oh boy, cool, I'm in the town Van Perfect. Helsing yeah, is in. This is I, I, I grant what you're saying that this is all <laughs> well, like just completely, say this shit's so important. <laughs> I don't think it is. That like, is that, a story of a movie. That it's shit, have Goonies to get and Explorers stuff together does not, so that the kids will have monsters to fight. Exactly, this, but but Goonies and Explorers does not take such fucking leaps and bounds. They have logical storytelling. This is why I say this is the lesser of the version where they just wanted to throw something together, make a buck off of these fucking type of movies, and I can feel it. 
in the movie. I feel I the they love. Just, they had love for You just it. like yeah. Busters. But, but so he likes the, the remake of Wolfman. He likes the remake of Wolfman. Because it's awesome. Be, they, because they loved it. That's why well, they that's were what trying I think, to do it. But I think they, they love those monsters. So they're yeah. just like, they took shortcuts to get them together. Yeah. But they just wanted to play with those monsters. Maybe. Yeah. Well, I think the they had no other like, choice but those monsters. If they had a choice of you. like those monsters. But one of the things with like the 80s is like you have this kind of like abbreviated storytelling where like this movie's what, 81 minutes long or something? Like 82. Yeah. 82 minutes. Crazy short, yeah. Like, they do everything. Like, all the scenes are very, uh, you know, like, truncated or something. There's a yep. scene where, like, the uh, the kid, you know, Sean, our little protagonist, is sitting on the roof of his house looking at the drive-in movie theater with the, the binoculars. Yeah. And his dad comes up, and they say, like, two lines to each other. And, like, the scene's over, and I'm like... That seemed really you know, <laughs> like what was the point? Yeah, I mean, it was just to show like this father son bonding moment, I guess. But you know, it's like in a modern movie, there'd be a an actual scene there. You know, it's like mm-hmm. so. I guess it feels like they had by choice or something. You know, that they just said we're going to tell like the shortest version of this as possible and just kind of like hit through all these beats. So mm-hmm. I mean, there's not really a whole lot of character development. It's basically. You know, just there to evoke this, you know, nostalgia for the monsters, the, you know, the coolness of being the kid who's able to stop the, you know, monster Armageddon or whatever. I don't even get the, I mean, they don't even write the relationship between the kids because it's like, okay, you see, we find our first two characters like in the principal's office, they got in trouble for drawing monsters. So you're like, okay, cool. These kids are monster squad kids, right? And then the next scene is, uh, the fat kid, they call him, lovingly. Fat kid. <laughs> Could never get away with that in a movie now. No. A character just fat exclusively kid. called Fat Kid. And, it, yeah. and it's funny, like, Goonies, you know, they sit like chubs. You know, they had nicknames, not just like, hey, fat person, you know? <laughs> but even his friends called him that. That was the weird thing. Yeah. Like, even his friends were like, hey, fat, fat kid. kid. Well, that's why I didn't know, understand how they were friends. That's my problem with this movie. It's because, like, okay, we see Horace get picked on by uh, the older uh The older brother Arnold from Wonder Years. From yeah. Wonder Years. <laughs> That butthead. Yeah. And then the badass kid, is his name Rory? What's his name? Rudy. 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 Which is not a badass name. Does not uh, match. Rudy. That's, <laughs> that's Does why you not have to match. Learn to fight. Yeah. <laughs> so Rudy, like, screeches up on his bicycle. Spike would have been better. And he's yeah. just like, He's got that awesome introduction. He just though, tells him to leave him alone. It is awesome. Lighting the cigarette, you know, the match on the back of his That was a really cool heel. scene. And he just calls him Horace, right? Like they've met before or something. Yeah, my like friend that. Horace. Yeah. Uh, then it seems like there should have been a scene where Horace and and Rudy meet the other two kids, but they're not, there's not. There's just like a. Well, there is. He takes him out and is like, "Hey, let Rudy just save me from these other kids." But it Let's seems like Horace club. doesn't really know those other two kids too. It seems like they all kind of met. It doesn't. Well, I get the feeling that Horace yeah. has always been in the monster club. The question that I guess I always had is like, why does Rudy wants want to be in the monster club? I mean, yeah. the only yeah. Where did that... Horace and Rudy meet? Where Where is the connection there? Just the idea. I mean, if there was Rudy like a detention, or maybe if there was like a, I don't know. It would have been better if like Rudy was like, nah, man, I don't want to join your club. I'm a loner. And they just like keep running into him throughout the thing and <laughs> yeah, he right. finally joins them at the end to help fight the monsters. Like that would have been better rather than him just being like, can I be in your if, club? If he's so cool, why does he want in their nerd club? Yeah, you right. know, like, right. like he should be chasing Taylor or something. Yeah. Like he should that. join them at the end and be like, you know what? You guys are pretty cool. You guys are pretty that's cool. That's what his character you want to smoke is cigarettes? doing. Right. Yeah. There you go. Pack for all of you. Pack well, that's the odd thing, you, too. You. It's like, it seems like Rudy, you know, because Rudy's like the older kid. Rudy, and he's Rudy, Rudy. But then they say, oh, with... he's in middle school. Like, right. that's how much older he is. He's <laughs> right, in right. middle so school. Like, like yeah, so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, when he has, so he's like, uh, you know, fawning over the next door neighbor who's always undressing in front of the window. Directly in front of the window. At 4.30 in the afternoon with all the lamps on as if it was a night scene, right? You guys didn't have neighbors like that? It seemed like it was a night scene. It's not the 80s. <laughs> but when he actually gets a chance to like, you know, because they have to recruit her to, you know, she's the version to recite. Well, we find out later that she's the that sister. Yeah, but we find yeah, out she's, she's the sister of, of one of the other, the little like kid. Sean's yeah. other like main buddy, I guess, who yeah. has a name. Does he have a name? Uh, yeah. I don't remember. Sean's buddy. Gary. I don't know. <laughs> it seems like they really stressed everyone else's name there except was a for mummy his. In my Even the oh, guy, the other one. Eugene. Right, yeah. Eugene, Eugene Pete. I know everybody's name except for like the dog. The dog's name is Pete. Yeah, Pete. Yeah, yeah. That was a very little rascal thing. I thought having the smaller kid with the dog. That was really. Fun. The, dog the dog deserved is, like second billing in this movie. Like, 
Yeah, Once again, I mean, but that's, no where, that's where the thing actually works is those little moments where, like, you know, they're all putting their hands on top of each other's hands, you know, doing oh. the, like, we're the monster squad, and the dog, like, puts his yeah. little paw in there. I loved the part the, where he unwrapped the mummy, like, helped yeah, unwrap it in the that car. Was that was adorable. Yeah. But yeah. what doesn't work is when the mummy's just in Eugene's closet for no reason. It's just like, Jesus, this movie's just doing things to Yeah, do why it. was that? Fucking yeah. nonsense. That didn't get all. Like, why, just why have this scene? Why is the mummy in his closet and walk away? It was funny. That's it. Yeah. We don't need funny. logic if, it, if we think it's entertaining because yeah. they're dumb fucking kids. That's why I don't, yeah, I don't like movies that treat its audience like it's retarded. <laughs> fucking retarded. Yeah, that was true. a cool camera shot with the door opening and the mummy behind the bed, <laughs> yeah, though. Like, that was a nice camera Just the fact that the cool. dad, yeah. Now, if your dad didn't see it, would you, like, literally, like, question your, like, you know, faculties? Would you be like, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. covered through that. That was. Yeah. I mean, it was a funny scene, but. But that's all it was. You know, but that's it, all it was. That's why it didn't it pay created. off at all. No. Like, yeah. No. Yeah. no, just to have, like, the mummy in the, yeah. Yeah. Well, why was the mummy there? He was already out of the room. You're asking the wrong fucking question. <laughs> You're asking the right questions. If, if this was okay, any I other can... child movie, you would be dogging it. You're just because there's fucking right. monsters in it. But this yeah, is it's my child movie. Yeah, there you go. It's uh, like, he wasn't it. even a child when it came out. He was like 17 or something when it came out. <laughs> no, it was, uh, yeah, I'll figure that out. 87. Later. 14 years old. 14. Yeah. I guess. Right? Is that right? So still impressionable That's by right. something right. like this. Yeah. Edge, like this yeah. just caught you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think you were the high what, end of I the think demographic. That's what happened. It's like, you know, when you watch it, and I think that's maybe what you're saying you can't watch it as an adult or can't have fun with it. I couldn't even watch adult. it as a kid though. Mm-hmm. And you were a monster kid. But the thing I you know, it's like the stuff that actually I did work for kid. me, right? It's like, okay, so here you go. The stuff that actually works, and I'm saying that these are in little moments and scenes. The uh, domestic drama between the mother and the father. The father's a cop, and he's always going out, so they're going to a marriage counselor. Wives always there's hate a, cops. But there's Why a do scene, they marry him? There's a scene where uh, she's in, like she's putting the little girl to bed with the candle, whatever, yeah. and the little girl's like, are you going to yell at him? And she's like, honey, I love your father. And the little girl's like, what? I'm talking about... You know, Sean, Sean, are you going to yell at yeah. Sean for doing all this stuff? And I'm like, oh, that's like, you know, one of those moments that like works dramatically, at least to me, in this it works. otherwise. Yeah. The yeah, drama it's, works. It's full of it all these little moments. Especially with, with the, uh, the crazy German man, guy. Uh, the where, where the, he, they leave the house for the first time. He's like, you know a lot about monsters. I guess that I do. <laughs> oh, I didn't man. like that. Like, that oh, was yeah. too yeah. heavy. Even Colin was like, oh, I know, shit, yeah. real I thought, world. I thought that was too but heavy. But that didn't end up meaning anything either. No, like, no. That he didn't. just like, no, we so just got to remind you, don't forget. It was a nice wink at the camera. Don't like, be anti-Semitic. Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't like this movie, you're anti-Semitic. <laughs> hey, the scene should have almost gone on where it cut the starts his arm and then he leans and goes, because I'm Jewish. Yes. <laughs> they were That's Nazis. What it yeah. it yeah. was the Holocaust. But he has also like a number of scenes like where, movies. like uh, you know, from tonight's viewing, the everybody's favorite character was uh, his little sister. Yeah, mm-hmm. she's Phoebe. She's great. Phoebe. Is she Phoebe the Phoebe? Phoebe. I don't know. Phoebe. Phoebe. A terrible the, teasing nickname. Yeah. Yeah. What does that even mean? Uh, Phoebe the Phoebe. Phoebe yeah. the dweeb. Well, I mean, yeah. they've got you better. know what fat kid and Phoebe the Phoebe. <laughs> Uh, and they treat Second her so horrible feed. too. You it's know, it's like there's no, uh, you know, like like Sean hates his sister. Is what it, yes. it seems unwarranted, like. <clears throat> completely <Yeah>. unwarranted. <laughs> you're supposed to. I mean, is that you're what you're supposed, supposed to, to do? do? I never had a little sister. sister. I know because I, I think that's how you know kids actually that's how are it works. more yeah. than they are that way in the movie. So that feels more genuine. I think. I mean, the fact that they swear and the fact that they do all the stuff that they do is like you know. I want to be a part they of They feel it. more like no. real kids. Yeah. But I think like her relationship with the Frankenstein monster is, you know, like touching, you know, Mm -hmm. and I think that 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 so it's like some of the relationship stuff, even though I can't explain. Right. Why why Rudy wants to join the monster squad or why Frankenstein is not controlled the way the Wolfman and the creature and like all them have like some sort of magic control, control, but somehow Frankenstein isn't (laughs) like because he's inherently good or childlike. I think it's probably the thing. He is a child in his mind. So, but they could like lead to that. (laughs) They could like give us some clue. All right. Or they could have done, they could have done the scene, but have him not throw her in the water. Like that yeah, because it thing. was like, nice when they think... were like when they were looking back at that when they were recreating the scene. They did. The little girl they from cut Rider to the shot and you, you automatically know what mm-hmm. is yeah. oh, what they're shit. going She's for. Throw in. And they should have done more to that rather She's than just pull him out in. from a tree. I think like that would have been that would have gone farther to showing that the 
uh, what you think the Frankenstein is going to be to what he actually is. Mm-hmm. Instead of him just being pulled It just up. turns yeah, into God, like, let's put him in the look. club. Yeah. And that's Tom Noonan under all that yeah. makeup. Uh, Noonan. Tom Noonan is like the, one of the scariest serial killers in movie history in the movie Manhunter. But here he's like this gentle soul Frankenstein. Yeah, Tom, he's also uh, he was in another good uh, Shane Black movie. Anybody? Anybody? I don't like Shane Wait Black. Wait for it. Wait Anybody? for it. Come on. We can't have dead air. I don't Last like Shane action Black. hero. It's the oh, Ripper. Yeah. 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 No one likes that movie. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, no. It's horrible. But it's it is horrible. <laughs> horrible That's horrible my son of big set. It's a good time. Yeah, Anyways. I don't know. Like, I love monsters, but I need story first, not just monster. Like, I just need a story. Well, just it's some get, story. But it's going Kids are of... not that dumb. I was a kid. I like a story. I don't want to be like, okay, this is happening. Now this is happening. This is happening. I get it. These kids curse and smoke. But I need a little bit more. Yeah. Other than just the, hey, we've got the basics of something to have them here so that, so that we can have monsters. But it also, kids will like I think this just because like, they're the, but it's, you know, and this is the thing where it's edgy. probably not working, you know, with its intended audience and why it didn't uh, end up becoming like a box office thing. It's like the writers of this movie are affectionate for the movies of the 30s and the 40s. They've seen all of those. And so some of this is like, has that stuff already happened? Because in this movie, monsters obviously exist. Like, they're part of history. The whole thing of uh, Dracula weird. going back to, you know, this alternate universe where, the, you know, this where this place takes place. You know, there's like the uh, the southern Spanish moss trees and the big mm-hmm. southern mansion where, you know, uh, the, the amulet is kept and that Dracula ends up moving into this house. I'm like, is that supposed to be like he's coming back here because he used to own it in The Son of Frankenstein? Right, like or not, Son of Frankenstein. It's trying to Dracula. Like he was there already. If like the if the other movies have already happened, that is like the background of the story, kind of that they're just like assuming that all of that's already yeah. taken place, and we're just building off of that. But it's like the twelve year old audience hasn't seen any of those yeah. movies, mm-hmm. so that's where it's not going to connect with them. Well, but I, don't, I think even kids, like I mean, I don't. That's think assuming eight, that this is a sequel, basically, late 80s, then, right to the Universal Monster. Movie. I don't think late eighties kids were into the Universal Monsters. I mean. I remember being into him when I was a kid. I mean, that's why you were older and liked it because you were. But I remember, like, uh, you know, there would be. Well, I mean, there was like, you know, Frankenstein Halloween masks. Yeah, there's always Frankenstein. But they weren't scary. Like the model kits and stuff like that that you could get that were Frankenstein. But they're like Halloween. You couldn't go get like the Freddy or Jason toys. There weren't any. (laughs) Yeah, like the the toys that you got if you wanted horror Mm. stuff was like. Frankenstein, Dracula, and the Wolfman. And like, the I remember being scared by Dracula and shit probably up until I was like three or four. But, you know, after that, you're like, well, they become cartoon characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I Because think- I never had a scary relationship with any of those right. characters. A scary relationship. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's I saw always been the fun. Frank Langella version of Dracula, the 79 one, like mm-hmm. when I was like 10 or something. And that movie had like some shock moments that, like, you know, worked right. Mm-hmm. You know, on a ten year old, I assume they did. The movie was rated R, or whatever, when it came out in theaters. So I'm sure it was working on audiences. But you know, it. So the vampires at that point to me were like, oh, vampires are spooky, scary, and they're you know. And then like in subsequent movies, they just become like, hey, we are becoming vampires. That's not really so bad. And you know, <laughs> and then you have a whole a movie where everybody in the Join cast up. is a vampire. It's yeah, like Uncle Sam <clears throat> pictures, but he's got teeth coming out. It's like yep. I don't want you. Do we know is this movie like the result of a passion project for anyone? Because it would make it, a, be. it would make a, a lot question. of sense if someone grew up loving these movies and it wanted to like, like give it to another generation. Yeah, I think that's like Fred I think Decker. that would actually justify a lot of things. But that's I mean, you know, I think that's Fred Decker on the basis of this and Night of the Creeps, where Night of the Creeps, you know, I always it's see like these as like a, yeah, it's the fifties, you know, because he's going for like. 50s monster movies, 50s sci-fi. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's a scene that takes place in the 50s. Maybe the, you know, maybe the retro thing wasn't really for. I mean, the retro thing of the 30s monster movies was the 70s and 60s when they were being played on TV. That was the retro time, not the late 80s. But that's when all these kids, because that's why I'm like Fred Decker and Shane Black were younger guys. They yeah. didn't. They weren't alive in the 50s to actually see those movies when they were new. They grew up with them on TV. Yeah. And then like May when they were in their 20s or you know early 30s in the 80s, that's when they made their movies. Yeah. Because as soon as people saw Jason and Pinhead, people quit talking about. Frankenstein and Dracula, you know, they're just automatically like, oh no. 
I got to wonder if this was like somebody's passion project that was in a desk for like 10 years before it finally got made sort of thing. And that's why it's late to everything and why, you know, it feels like it's a cash grab when really it's a passion project. Sometimes those two things can seem similar. Or we have this script. Let's put the monsters in it. And maybe it's just Mm -hmm. different elements coming together. It's like, hey, yeah, let's resurrect the monsters because they haven't been on screen. I'm sure it was Goonies. Goonies had a video game. I mean, Goonies was like popping off, you know. Well, it's like it's a boy's adventure movie, right? Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it's like we, you know, kind of E.T. is a boy's adventure movie. But like, I think, you know, even... You know, knowing what we know of Shane Black now, he's a reader, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, so it's like there's a offhanded reference to the Hardy Boys. And right when they said that, I'm like, oh, shit, like this is like a Hardy Boys mystery. We got to go to the house and like the dad's a cop and like they're the fucking Hardy Boys, except he's got, you know, a couple extra friends with him. Yeah. You Mm -hmm. know, and Frankenstein in tow. Yeah. (laughs) It just makes it. All the more fantastic. So I know they couldn't like straight up do the Universal Monsters for like copyright reasons, but did you feel like th- like the quality of the design of the monsters was good? The quality was good, but I felt like the designs kind of looked like when you get like Chinese knockoff toys of a really popular <laughs> movie, like just slightly off a little yeah, bit. Just a little yeah, bit. just a little off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Franken man. Yeah. 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 Well, I guess so. So we got to talk about Dragon. each one of them and how they represent them here, right? Yes. So yeah. we're saying that the Stan Winston uh, Stan studios. Winston. Well, he's credited at the beginning as Monster Designs. And yeah. then in the credits, it breaks down like who on his crew was responsible for actually generating each one of right. those. Tom so, Woodruff, Alec Gillis. Yeah. Kind of all Steve Wang, makers. the Steve creature, Wang, creator of the Predator, of guy monster movies. makers on this. Yep. So, okay, you start at the top. You got Dracula. His appearance here Ooh, is really so far. Very, well, very okay, like. Is that worst? a Halloween costume of Dracula? Yeah. Well, it's Party the, City I, costume. Yeah. yeah. Who's the worst movie Dracula you've ever seen? Because I got one the worse. Spanish than this. original. <laughs> the 1939 <laughs> oh, no. Spanish Dracula. Carlos Villarreal is the worst. <laughs> no, that it looks sounds like, bad. It looks like Mel Brooks as Dracula. <laughs> oh, is there, does that movie exist? Did Mel, did Mel Brooks ever do Dracula? Because I'd watch that. Yeah. Dracula <laughs> doesn't love it. Right? I mean, as oh, Mel Brooks yeah. as Dracula. Oh, that's yeah, what I want to see a little Jewish yeah, Dracula. Will, will, oh, Jew, you never trust saw me. Uh, Van like, Helsing though with Richard Roxburgh as Dracula. Uh, like I'm gonna say that that one yeah. tops this one as being the worst yeah. cinematic Dracula. Ooh, yeah, the I'd Dracula agree. from Dracula versus Seven Brothers. That's a really bad Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> the, Any the, Dracula with a mustache <laughs> is a bad. Dracula. Christopher Lee did that once, but, <laughs> but yeah. So this design is like the. Uh. It's like it's. Bella Lugosi, but taller in color. So, like, yes. you actually get to see this red, you know, his cape yeah. interior his is red. His cape has, He's like, Batman-esque, uh, like, uh-huh. like, bat like, Yeah, <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Yeah. Well, let's see his allegiance. With I want it to bat. look like a bat wing. I turn into a bat, damn it. It's not literal enough. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't think they're going to get it. Yeah. <laughs> I want them to know. More stuff. So we're saying that that's Whoa. not the definitive And why wouldn't you, like, I don't know. No. If I was, no. No. That actor was poor man's oh Michael Fassbender, God. too. Yeah, <laughs> like, Duncan yeah. Well, he's not given really anything to do. Except no, all no all he's not. So, although that scene at the end where he yells at the little girl, and I think it's yeah. just because he picks up this, they like, give him the red eyes. girl. Right. And he's like, give me the amulet you bitch it's like jesus christ like, where was that yeah. Bitch. <laughs> yeah yeah that would have been better you fire you fire bitch. Old me the amulet yeah come on colin where's your accent that, that we've heard What's so it? much about uh, your, your romanian drink, drink your blood your yeah, italian I uh romanian I have to hello i am dracula <laughs> 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 it's the Polish Dracula. Yeah. <laughs> so, hello, I am Dracula. <laughs> All right, next one on the totem pole then is the Frankenstein monster. So uh, they the redesign they could. here yeah. because you can't have the bolts on the neck. Can't have flat, flat head. Yeah. Oh, the round head just head looks br- so wrong to me was for a some movie reason. Round head, wasn't it? All of uh, them except for the Universal movie. movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. oh yeah. Had brown skin uh, instead of green. Yeah, it's always brown. I mean, try everything to. Get yeah. it away, which he's sucks because I was like, around the forehead, right. and he's got the clamps on the in his yeah. temple. That makes me mad because if he's the real Frankenstein, not the movie Frankenstein, if he's a real Frankenstein, he should be smart. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. He should be smart. The old man already taught him how to speak and all this shit. Mm-hmm. If it's all real from the book, but this is sequels to the movies. I like how Unofficially- even in the movies. In, even in the movies, the old man yeah, taught him smoke. But good. He, yeah, I know. I good. thought they should have continued that in uh, in Son of Frankenstein, but they forget about it because they didn't want to pay 
Yeah, and, uh, they cut off. all his lines They're off. Like, He's an uh-huh. idiot in the whatever the Ghost, Ghost of Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. But then he said a brain transplant or something. Whatever. Yeah, Dear from, Lord, the continuity, my God, it's pretty <laughs> well, this great. Was, well, that was we great. keep saying the first interconnected cinematic uh, mm. universe was the the Universal Monsters. Yeah, I do like how they resurrected him though. That was kind of nice. The portable right. resurrection staff. I don't know how the, the staff that can do anything right. you wanted to like, when mm. you need it to. Yes. <laughs> Because he's the Gill Man. He's not the creature from the Black Lagoon. That's universal copyright. So he's the Gill Man or the creature or the... Yeah, they call him the creature. So this is like a design that kind of looks like... I know you were saying the Zoonoids from uh, yeah. the Giver. Yeah, a little bit. Because of Steve Wang. But to me, like, when I always when I saw that when I was younger, the thing I equated it with was the Predator. And I don't know why. I Steve mean, it's Wang. the oversized head and the, you well, know... Yeah. And if, yeah, and the, the jaws. Jaw. But if you put, like, that netting over that costume, mm-hmm. it's pretty much, the, like, the mm-hmm. same thing. Mm-hmm. The skin tone, it's kind of a little it's white and Steve green. Steve Way makes the best reptile skin in Hollywood. It's kind yeah, of nice. But the only problem with this is, like, that's a pretty decent, uh, I thought, pretty decent yeah. Gill yep. Man. Oh, yeah. But, the, but when you compare it to the original Gill Man from the Creature from the Black Lagoon, like, that fucking costume today, when you watch it, still holds up. I yeah. think it's like they did it well. You yeah, you could have that thing in a movie today, and it yeah. would probably look. You know, I mean, I guess the eyes were kind of big, kind of cartoonish to make it not so scary. I in thought. the in this one, oh, in this one, yeah, yeah, for sure, the eyes were kind of big. You know, very yeah. kind of cartoonish. Yeah, it's so got it more could have been of a, way it's more, got more scary. of a fishy head. Well, I suppose mm-hmm. the other fishy. one does too. The other one has like the fishy jaws. This one is like the fishy eyes. Mm. Yeah, I wish he would have had more screen time though, because I found him more interesting than the other three. Yeah, he had yeah. nothing. He, he had, had nothing, nothing to do. To do. Yeah, yeah. No, he had, he stayed in the water. I mean, all the creatures had like, nothing to do. The monsters had nothing to. They didn't even kill people. They just like snuck into closets for a funny scene and didn't do anything. All of it is set up for the final. Uh, we've got well, We've got Wolfman. It's already eighty-two movies. Eighty-two movies minutes. The best Wolfman I've seen in a while. Uh, <laughs> I do oh, that. No, no I do that just if, to needle. Yeah, I know because obviously, listeners, if the Oscar-winning uh, makeup for the Wolfman is right here on my wall, that doesn't make it a good movie. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, plenty of horrible movies have won Oscars. Man he just one. loves monsters so much. Blindly loves monsters. This uh, this Wolfman, I suggest to you, is more based on the Oliver Reed Curse of the Werewolf yeah. design because he's got the torn white shirt. Yeah, you know? mm-hmm. yeah, and Puffy the bigger. Chest. Yeah, bigger puffy chest. Which kind of like limits his movement. Makes him weird. His He was, had weird body proportions. He's got yeah. the like huge crazy upper, proportions. Yeah. Huge upper and then just the regular legs. Yeah. yeah. That's why I know I've, I've never so liked the Oliver And, his, and his, uh, his elbows are stuck to the side of his body. And his face was way too small for his head. Right. He his had no face snout. was so yeah. small. Kind of well, I think that's the problem even with. With, even with the modern remake, is like I I don't Which think one, the it, Oscar winning yeah makeup <laughs> that's right yeah. it was a it, it was just one of those Oscars they give to people because they deserved it forever ago you know it you know it <laughs> I know they deserved it for American Orphan London great so, great so Wolf uh, I have to say I really did enjoy that movie though ah, I like the Wolf there's Man another remake. one yeah. Oh, this yeah. one yeah oh thank you yeah. very much oh, I, I sit here yeah. like all the time I thought Del Toro was great. Yep. Oh, you know, there you go. Bam. Everybody Vindicated else was, everybody else was a little too oh much God. over we'll the top. Writers, please. I was going to yeah, make a plea to the listeners. <laughs> please listen to <laughs> this movie. My right. point yeah, is, no, a, I, a wolf man is not supposed to look like a bipedal wolf. You know what I mean? You can, you can, you can have wait, wait, either wait. or. You can have a wolf man. Or a werewolf. You can have a There's a difference, bipedal, definitely, yeah. I just think Agreed. there is a difference, mm-hmm. and I think they sure. look weird when you try to do the normal mannish looking body with a weird, you know, head. It always looks fucking stupid. I did like how they did the transformation scenes, not just for the Wolfman in this, mm. but they did one earlier on with the Dracula bat. with the bat stuff. Those are right? all awesome. The, the cuts were good. Like earlier in the movie, I think I mentioned it. Like they did three cuts, and it was mm-hmm. a better transformation than I've seen in some things. Yeah, it was from like you bat see to the bat, and you kind of pan around it a little bit, hand. see its face, and then you see it flap its wings, right. which That's becomes right. in a cut. Right. The hand, which shrinks yep. in one shot, and, and then the next reaches up. In. It reaches up, and on that shot, it's a human hand with just a lot of hair on it, and it lets go of the beam, <laughs> and then it, we see the hand land on the ground, and now it's actually Dracula, mm-hmm. and he somehow... I love suit. the way that like his suit always yeah. appears with him whenever yes. he's... They I pop mean, in and out of existence when he needs them to. I don't yeah. Is that what's happening, or yes. is it cellularly <laughs> like generating over the top? Like That's just part of his... Because it goes like invisible <laughs> right. in the mirror, yeah. even though it's, you know... Right. Yeah. And also, well, when they first showed Dracula, my favorite thing... Uh, like a sort of little details or set designs is the fucking bats. 
I love those bats. <laughs> the bats because, I, yes, because it's a nostalgia the thing. It what is. The, this yeah. is that's oh, why it but works. It's so good. <laughs> like they did the really good version of it too. Oh, I loved it. That was my favorite. The bats on poles. Yeah, the bats on poles. Imagine some uh, operator off screen. All those are great. Actually, yeah. with the red eyes, love it. I thought the cold open was one of the most interesting parts of this movie. Like it starts with a bang. Yeah, it does. Yeah, you don't really know what's happening, but it well, starts with it a bang. Also, there should have been a Monster Squad song right at the beginning with the right. title Monster right, right. Squad. And then go over the school like doom, 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 Monster yeah. Squad. <laughs> you know, and then, like yeah. they're in the school and stuff like that. Right. That's how you start an eighties movie. Yeah, <laughs> there was definitely not enough montages in this movie. Right. We only one, like two only for this one movie. in an eighties movie. That's crazy. Wait, what was the song with that? Well, there was an original song they did called like Dance to Bop My until Heart. You drop. Or no, something what like was that. it? Rock until you drop. Yeah. Till your heart brains fall out or some shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was good. That was pretty good. I like that one. That was <laughs> and they had a really yeah. cheesy, like, well, we got to do a Ghostbusters, th- I mean, a uh, Monster Squad theme. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, did you know that Ghostbusters 2 didn't come out until two years after this? So did Ghostbusters 2 totally rip off the... Uh... No. Okay, there's a Ghostbusters theme from 84. It doesn't rap. Doesn't matter. What are you talking about then? Oh, just it because like it. just because you need a just the monsters. No, just because you need a uh, squad, and it's a, like well, recapping the movie because they're they're <laughs> capturing they're trying to capture the magic that happened with Ghostbusters at the end. So they're like, we need a Ghostbusters uh, type of Monster Squad song. Okay. Give me Hollies. All right, it's on uh, audio. That's fine. Holly. Holly, I'm uh, drinking your beer. Thank you. We uh, we are drinking. Your Sorry, beer. you're yeah. in Florida. This I'm is a guy named Sean drinking your last beer. I'm drinking your last beer. Bring more next time. So Thank the you. other uh, character then is the Mummy, which mummy. I actually do think That's that this good, is good maybe mummy. the yeah. definitive movie Mummy to me. Uh, Tells from the dark side is pretty good. I like but, this one's face better because yeah, it's got like the cool cataract face. eye and underneath like it's a skull basically yeah. wrapped in bandages. Yeah. Yeah. The, and I like when it's walking away. It's like you tell me you just walked out of here and it's like. Shh. That's nothing to do. And it's also like designed as like very thin, so it looks like a bag of bones. Yes. Basically, I think maybe it's one of the thinnest movie mummies it is that I've ever seen. Definitely just being held by, together by those wrappings. This but movie... the downside is that you know whenever you see a thin mummy, I think like although I'm saying the design is cool for like this is like a realistic fantasy mummy. If that make any sense? <laughs> right. Yeah. But it also kind of takes the threat away because, like, the bigger dude mummy, you know, the yeah. Lon Chaney mm. or the Tales from the Dark Side mummy, mummy, they're like, but it's a big just, imposing But that's the know, director, figure. right? Because you have a lot of kids and they're just seeing it from kind of a normal eye view, right? So that sh- that's on the director, really, showing, like, how scary right. the mummy yeah. well, it's is the to more the skeletal, you know, mummy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Okay, another big problem before we, like... How does Dracula find out that the main character has Van Helsing's journal and that he's in a monster club? Magic. I don't give a oh, shit. Oh, you can just evil dark dude, magic. Dude, yeah, <laughs> fuck. Come on, be real about your movie. Why don't you talk seriously about how mo- this movie has no story? It just kind of lucks into everything. There's just like a phone message. No, like, but I agree Dr. with Alicard. all that. I agree with well, all but, that. But I'm, I'm just, don't talk that- about. Well, I'm just saying, let's talk about it, guy. We have to talk about. It. We're not skating over that shit because. Because, like, uh, this movie, because I was like, this is why the monsters had nothing to do is because there should have been a scene where Dracula's like, get the, you know, he should have told all the monsters, get these kids, find out the journal. Yeah, instead of just Frankenstein. Yeah. 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 Because that's Maybe that was why the mummy was in the one closet. What if all the monsters take one kid to see if they have the journals? Like, that's a fucking story. I just wrote the goddamn story of Monster Squad. That that probably is what it was actually happening. And then they're like, let's cut this story out. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's the 80s and we don't have I need this cop drama. We need the cop (laughs) drama for them to really care if they get back together again. Yeah, you think that exists? His idea that just happened? It has, I have no something idea. like that has to happen. Because it's like, how the fuck can they not... How can there not be a scene where Dracula finds out the kids have the the journal mm-hmm. and that they're going to go after it? How yeah. can you not have that? That's the really important scene in the movie. Especially when Dracula pulls up to the house and just blows up the clubhouse. It's like, what the fuck? How does he know this shit? How does well, he know that's their clubhouse? How's it? There's uh, nothing to tell you this. Well, I'll tell you, the only thing that you can that you can draw from the movie is that there's like just di- they don't show you this but there's dialogue that like the mom goes and somehow to an estate sale or garage sale and b- purchases the Look. object of you know everyone's attention the abraham van helsing's diary at okay. this old house on S- sunnybrook road or no it's like shadowbrook road right yeah and somehow because of the sale 
Dracula knows who has purchased it <laughs> yeah. and calls. Where's the scene where he's just checking receipts? Yeah. <laughs> Checks the receipts. He oh. calls on the phone, leaves a message with mom that as Alucard, Mr. Alucard, he wants to From purchase the book. Son of Dracula <laughs> with uh, Lon Chaney Jr. Yeah. He was Duck. He was Alucard. He was Alucard. This, but uh, I guess that's why maybe that in the, uh, whatever, the, um, the like, Southern General statue is like, you know, made me think that, like, are they just, is this supposed to be in continuity with those movies? I There's nothing, I, I'm just extrapolating this. I don't I know just, if that's actually a thing. Yeah. Yeah, so the creature from the Black Lagoon is, like, somehow summoned because these are, like, all the monsters and the dark forces of the Earth, and they mm-hmm. want to be there for this moment that they can destroy the amulet. You wouldn't know that. And uh, I think that's stated in the crawl at the very beginning of the movie. Oh, like, oh cause they like. <laughs> oh shit, we forgot this really important story. scene. Yeah. That's uh, why the crawl. Hold is on, there. I'll write a quick story to put in the beginning of the movie. Yeah. Once upon a time, monsters. Voiceover? Yeah. Ah, no, just yeah. put the words on the screen. Yeah, Go. I could have used a voiceover. Right? I, I, Where's John Larry Kelly? In the him? beginning. No, in once beginning. upon a time. Yes. Yeah. I feel like they like test screen this with a lot of audiences at like two hours long and just kept trimming it and trimming it until <laughs> Maybe, it got yeah, down yeah. to 82 Quite minutes. Possibly. It is a shame yeah. that is somehow movie. fit it into so many Does screenings. Does the Blu-ray have yeah. the latest scenes? I don't know. It's been and it's all time. the important plot points that yeah, you it's needed. All the right, right. Every single one. I will grant you that as a Shane Black movie, this does not have the voice of Shane Black. There's a couple no. of no. Uh, and It's not jokes. Christmas. There are a couple of jokes. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. No Christmas. No, you get cops. But it's not even yeah. Halloween either. I was like, what the fuck? Come on, guys. If mommy's right? going to walk it's around in broad right. daylight, yeah. I need Halloween right? even a to be the season. The There's a oh, scene that's atmosphere. reminiscent of the Halloween uh, trick-or-treating sequence from E.T. where like all of them or, you know the the Frankenstein monster and the kids silhouetted walking into the sunset. Yeah. Like, uh, I would have reason, loved that. Of that. I think it was like, wait, did it take place on Halloween? Because <laughs> no. I remember that scene. But that's from ET. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> could you imagine though if there was a scene where they like all the kids went trick or treating with the monsters? And everyone's like, what great costumes! That would have been hilarious to like cut in like a montage of like them trick or treating. Yeah, that there's a Monster Squad remake that could be made. Yeah. Here with all these with like, the story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we could make a story. We could almost just and... shoot extra scenes and put them in this movie. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Call yeah. me, uh, Tristar, whoever owns the yeah. Decker. Yeah, yeah, we can help you out. We mm-hmm. can do this. But uh, so, I mean, the, the only scene that I ever walked away that made me feel like I want to be part of the Monster Squad is when ah. the the three um the three like mistresses of Dracula, whatever yes. you want to call them, in white, which I think is a great visual. Like that whole mm-hmm. little mini scene right there where he sees them, they're all walking down Go down the street from down, Gremlins. Yeah, down the from street. Back to the and, future. Yeah, it was yeah. like, just it. blowing mm-hmm. in the wind. It's like, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And that like they're trying to, the they got the chick uh, who they saw naked in the window, the one dude's uh, sister. Sister, who uh, they, that was uh, my point earlier. Rudy, when he has a chance to actually like flirt with the girl who he's hot on, like makes fun of her. Yeah, like in two scenes, or you're like, what are you doing? Because well, she's a preppy. <laughs> she was pointless. You know? Like her whole role in the movie ended up meaning nothing. Yeah. Anyways, yes. like she. It was a foil. Red, red it was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't want to admit she's a she's a, not a virgin to her brother or whatever. Yeah, that doesn't count. That's yeah. funny. <laughs> yeah, like Steve like, doesn't, doesn't count. count. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> but what were you saying? Uh, just uh. So yeah, they're whatever. They're going to the town, the middle of the town for the climactic. Uh, Vortex. The climactic windstorm. They get the sister who they think is a virgin that the old scary German is going to read from the Van Helsing's book to open the uh, portal once again. And when those three uh, mistresses, of, what do they call? They call Dracula's mistresses. Am I the, brides the brides. Of thank you. The brides of Dracula. Dracula. Yes. Uh, and so Rudy, he's like, "Well, you know, I'll fucking take care of this." And they're like, no, Rudy, you're going to die. And he's like, I'm in this goddamn club, aren't I? I'm like, yeah, I want to be in the Monster Squad. Like, <laughs> yeah. That's the only scene where I'm like, all right, because that's the only scene that has like any action in the whole movie. That's almost like there's there's just, there should be a goal for the monsters. There should be a goal for the human. It's like, uh, they, it's all nobody has anything to do. On this, like, yeah, I know. None of the monsters do until like at the end. The monsters are basically there to Attacking. pop up out of sewers and basically attack. But if they were so like, all... Wolfman has a person that he's attacking and there's only one way you can kill him. The creature shows up and there's only one way you, apparently you can kill him, which is by blasting him with a shotgun and horse. It's almost like... 
Hey, fat kid, thanks a lot. My name is Horace. That was funny. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> that it's was almost good. like if they would have... because of the cut-in that happens right, just, like right there on the... Yeah. It's like if the mom would have bought the amulet with the book and every hundred years evil is attracted to it, that would have like given us like at least something for why these monsters are going after right. these kids. Right. Or... like, I think they're coming for this. What do we do? How do we stop yeah, this? Yeah, it might be in the book. That out? Or some shit like that. We need like, to find a German guy. A German. <laughs> the Germans. Just the but. idea that the mom found Van Helsing's diary at like a yard sale is the most insane thing I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> isn't he a fictional character? Right. Though that just reminds me of like there was a movie that came out like a year or two ago with Jennifer Lopez called The Boy Next Door. Yeah. And Sorry. there's a part in it where like the boy next door buys her a first edition copy of the Iliad. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Like, what is that? Like Homer's throat? To, like, yeah. 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 You know, I, this movie should have ended. The Invisible Man should have showed up. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Was that? I know, right? Be like, I heard you boys need help or something like yeah. that. Roll credits. Or yeah. something. You're oh, that right. That probably would have been cool. He was. Yeah. That would have been good. Yep. That would have been good. Yeah. 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 I'm telling you, Monster Squad, The Return, The Next Generation. They could. There's uh, uh, potential in this. There is a lot of potential. That's just like, I, I, that's why I think it was more of a money grab than like a lovable monster. I like, I just think like it might be there, but it's like the surface. Like, it's like they, if I think I'll, if all that real heart was really there, they would have put it in the movie. It's too missing much, too from the movie. Cocaine, too well, much cocaine, man. Well, it's yeah. possible. <laughs> we got to get that money. We it's get possible that, money. that either you had the guys making it were so young that Maybe. they, you know, or they had some bad advice. Maybe. Or, you know, they were just like at that period of time, it's like just whittle it down to the. Or the studio's like, you're too young. You don't know what you're doing. Let's we're yeah. take this and. Because they weren't Shane Black and Fred Decker at no. that point. I mean, like they those guys have a bigger cachet now. They're I think both of them are working on the new Predator. Uh, I think yeah, so. Whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. franchise is going to happen. Yeah, they are with the huge. Yeah, as Shane Black's directing and Fred Decker's writing. I think uh-huh. so. And I'm sure he'll have input in the writing. Obviously. Yeah, and Fred I, Decker also did uh, real quick. He did. Uh, he also directed uh, RoboCop three. Oh, oh no. with the ninjas. Yeah, and I think that was. Basically, after that, he fucking quit working. I mean, really? I don't know what, you know. He does conventions works. now. I've seen him at a couple oh, yeah. conventions, yeah. Did he, did he direct anything else, you know? Not that I know of, no. It doesn't he still write? Shane Black probably bounces ideas off of him, and they probably get together. I think, yeah, I think Fred Decker still writes. Oh, I could wait. be wrong. Mm. I do like how they dealt with the Wolfman later on in the movie. Uh, especially what felt like a Shane Black joke when they're talking about how do you kill a werewolf at the beginning of the movie. They're like, silver bullets and a, a, a bomb. Uh he falls out of a window onto a bomb, and then later on in the movie, it fucking happens. Yeah, oh, it's great. That was great for me. <laughs> Stick it in and then push him out the window, which is a good, also a good effect. I just yeah. the explosion and then all the body parts and then coming back together. It, it would almost been better if you'd seen them yeah. come back together, but still pretty good. And like, I like everybody that. remembers the Wolfman's got Nards thing, which yeah. like it's not funny. It's and, like not, it doesn't. Play it's not. It falls so flat. Like, that's the yeah. one thing I know it's with a funny this movie. You know that it's, it's on coming, t-shirts so. and everything. It's, on t-shirts. Yeah. Yeah. it's like who likes that part? Because yeah. I kind of like the it's creature been took my by the Twinkie. fact that you've that seen it, you know, so many times. Oh, that's what's kind of. But I've only seen this like twice. The product placement in this movie was out of control. Burger King. Adidas, Pepsi, yeah, yeah. Burger King, Twinkies. I want to take you back to a magical time <laughs> called the 80s. What are you talking about? Films where Man of Steel has, every superhero yeah. movie has we bad figured out. But, like, was this a... Uh, Superman the movie was the first one that did it, right? But, like, was yeah. the, right, but this yeah. movie wasn't, like, a blockbuster by any means, yeah, right? Like, like that's what's insane. That that's what's crazy about it. Yeah, yeah like... probably anything. knew you were in yeah. the 80s. And that actually extends down into, like, even... The when you read Stephen King stuff from that name era, and maybe even now, but you know, he is using name mm-hmm. brands all the time. Close Encounters, mm-hmm. I remember being like one of the first movies that seemed like you know, when they take the trucks that they're gonna go looking for the UFO, they're all with name brands. It was that just like a right. wide shot of it pulling away, yeah. The idea right. being, I think, that it somehow plant it makes it all more familiar to you because yeah. it looks like a recognizable world, but yeah. at the right. same it's just time, not a recognizable like, world, yeah. Babe. This is a fantasy yeah. horror environment where right. the, you know. The kids There's, wearing an Adidas jacket. They fall into a stack of Adidas those boxes. Those stacks, like, those God boxes damn. were stacked so nicely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, like, two sides you 
could see the logo from. <laughs> like, yeah. Can we see yeah. it from both yeah. sides? I really think this. I can't even remember where they were at. It's like why is there, there some like nice thirty boxes of, the boxes of too. Yeah. right here for them to uh, follow? Yeah. They were downtown warehouse. and they ran into a warehouse. Yeah. 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 The yeah. Yeah. warehouse, warehouse this right. town. Yeah. That's like Larry, Larry David has said with Seinfeld. Like it's like people always like ask him, "Do you do product placement?" He's like, "No." He's like, "I just write the joke how it sounds funniest." He was like, "If I instead of Junior Mints, if I put something else, it's not as funny." He's like, "His Junior Mints is just such a random candy to pick." Right. So like yeah. for him, it's not even product placement. It's just what sounds hilarious. Or when you, you have know? something else like the Morley cigarettes and the mm-hmm. X Files, it's like right. it's obvious that like well, you couldn't Marlboro would didn't agree to this or right. whatever. You know, it's like but sometimes I like that. Kevin Smith has red nails. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I like mm-hmm. it when someone comes up with their own brand for their universe it makes yeah. the Even it makes their what, universe apple? more real yeah, but movie but those don't <laughs> movie but the red apples movie burger, are right. they like the equivalent of the marlboro i mean because the yeah, red apple box Pulp, looks Pulp like the marlboro bro- yeah. box you know what i mean big like, kahuna burger but yeah what's that's that a what's that an burger. analogy for that's like in the world of like mcdonald's and burger king there's also mm-hmm. a big kahuna burger it's not like Big Kahuna Burger is the replacement but for it's McDonald's. Just, but it's a little. I mean? But it's a little to us. It like it That's solidifies it their right, universe you better if you if they make their own yeah. than just like Burger King because then it feels like an uh, ever you know advertisement, mm, right. which it probably is. It doesn't yeah. even feel like it, it yeah. is. That new you know? Hawaiian burger joint? Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of those around. You gotta do yeah. the Jamaican burger joint in our Jamaican, yeah. burger. Jamaican jerk burger. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yummy. <laughs> I just went down to Jamaican Jerk Burger and had this amazing, <laughs> just, yeah. or just Jerk Burger. I, I'm gonna write that the down. Jerk well, Burger. I had the I I and I whatever yes. burger and yeah, yeah, we're going to Jerk Burger. You want to go? Burgers. Oh, I love that. That just sounds good coming out of the mouth. That's jerk, funny. Burger. jerk Burger. Jerk mm-hmm. Burger. Copyright 2016. So, I mean, does that wrap up? Is the that it? Club? I mean, what else is there? Say really goodbye to Frankenstein yeah. as he rolls into the yeah. Board. There's kind of eighties Ben Helsing comes out of nowhere. I don't he's know. in limbo. They don't even show you come out. He just like, he's just, he's just like, in the ah! next scene. You're like, okay, he's Whoa. flying around But now. a lot of those shock moments that they do earlier with like the Wolfman <laughs> actually work. But I, it's a consistency <laughs> of like cutting in this movie. You know, it's like, we're just going to cut while the thing's already in progress. But the Wolfman, what I, you know, what I don't like <laughs> about the makeup of the Wolfman, because mm. it's obviously a big animatronic head. That's my, right. my problem with it. On top of a guy. So and the, so the obvious, eyes are yeah. like, you know, disproportionate. Just, yeah. <laughs> you know, blank. Uh, yeah, but what I do like is his, the ferocity that the editing kind of gives him because he's always like in action when it cuts to him. Like, you know, whenever he's like here and like, and then cut, bam, he's crashing out of a mm. phone booth or whatever. So I, I like the ferocity of it, but it's not even there in the performance, and it's not there in the makeup of it. No. I still think he's my favorite monster out of all the monsters in this movie. The Wolfman? I think so. I'm going to go with the mummy. Creature. Just because I like, like the, the design. Oh. I like the de- the design of the creature the best, definitely. Like, in, in the Universal Monsters world, the Wolfman's always going to be my favorite, but I just yeah. didn't like the way he looked in this movie, like, Doesn't in the way weird. he moved. And I just, the scene where he was, like, in the ambulance or whatever, and it was, like, he started oh, to transform yeah. under the blanket was really cool, but, yeah. like... That was two seconds of, you know. <laughs> Even the cut in the yeah, phone exactly. booth is actually pretty good. Even the ripped up shirt is just like, once again, it's like, uh, this feels like it's trying to be Victorian. And this isn't a Wolfman from the 1800s. You know, this mm-hmm. is supposed to be Lock some dude right walking around mm-hmm. it wasn't a, as a Wolfman. It wasn't a poofy shirt. No. Pirate it, it tried shirt? to be. It really did. It There's tried more its best to be. In this episode, yeah. we've ever had so many <laughs> <Seinfeld. laughs> Oh man! Yeah. Oh, uh, I will say, I don't think in a movie in 2016 you could ever have like a child actor point to another child actor and say, "Is she a virgin?" Yeah, like ever. Well, like, what about I, faggot? They say like, faggot, faggot like three and, times. And, and, uh, bad kids. Yeah. Right? They're allowed the, to no, say the, it. the good kids say the homos. Yeah. yeah. Like twice yeah. in the opening scene, the homo. It was a yeah. different time. I mean, yeah, no, it I mean, totally uh, was. It's a running thing that Shane yeah. Black still does today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because the nice guys was set in the 70s. Oh, oh yeah. 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 So, yeah. do we have any random stray final observations uh, about the Monster Squad before we summon our mailman? I think we're ready for Igor's. Mm-hmm. All right, Igor, where are you, sir? Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. You know, that's almost as bad as just not just calling it out, Colin. <laughs> I'm there waiting. <laughs> Thanks. Ha ha, funny Igor joke. Funny uh, Igor joke. We'll get you next week. <laughs> All right, well, I got like this much. 
Jesus. Uh, so, Damn. Yeah. So this was We're a good week. popular again. So we've got two episodes we're going to talk about, our House episode and the Monster Squad episode. And John Shearer writes in on Facebook and says, do a review of the movie Race with the Devil. Peter Fonda, late 70s movie, a good one for sure. So there you go. It's on our... I've heard about this. I've heard about this movie. Yeah, it's bikers and they run into Satanists. Yeah, and and they chase them. What if we do Drive Angry, John? No. Yes, please do that. I want to do that. I love that movie. Oh, damn it. Like Nick Cage (laughs) Drive Angry? Yes, yeah, Nick Cage, yeah. Amber Heard. Amber Heard. Yeah. It's, it's very, it seems very Tom similar. Tom Atkins to is in it uh, as well. This is Patrick Lussier, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, let's talk about his email. Techni- uh, technically, the full title is Drive Angry, colon, shot in 3D. Yes. Oh, so, that's the full title. So, on our episode house, uh, Karate Warrior 2. Karate right Warrior soon. 2. Okay, so I'm going to take you back in time. Karate Warrior 2 wrote in, at the time of house and said that he thought the movie was very bleak. And we were like, what in the hell are you talking about? He's like, Colin, I was ragging on House by the Cemetery, not House or Houseu. Oh. Uh, because it's one of those Twitter mix up where you're having a conversation uh. with somebody and, about another movie that also starts with House. That was so a personal a conversation. You yeah, guys got into a house themed <laughs> argument. All talking about different movies. Up. Yeah. So gotcha. he doesn't like House but by the Cemetery. But I also Cemetery. like House by the Cemetery, Karate Warrior. <laughs> That's too. okay, Karate Warrior. I Karate Warrior. But I understand why you don't like it. Chris Huddleston <laughs> writes in and says, apologies Hi, if I've made this similar comment before, but I felt that cocaine from executives to writers, directors, and stars led to many of the awesomely weird movies we got in the 80s, in much the same way weed and acid affected the music of the 60s and 70s. Cocaine. Definitely. Yeah. I think yeah. We were- Look at any Stallone movie. Yeah. <laughs> Over the top specifically. Cocaine. And specifically Maximum Overdrive. Yep. Uh, Joseph Daly writes in and says... Do you like the Japanese house? I'm still torn on it. I haven't revisited it since I first bought it, it's but it's house. such a weird yep. movie. Uh, yeah, it's weird. I mean, I think, I think personally, I think Sam Raimi got a lot of the first Evil Dead from House. Definitely, this movie is from, Definitely. Like, this. It I agree. Weird. It's yeah. like it's worth a watch, but it's not good by any means. Like it, it's something that you watch to be like, what the fuck am I watching? Yeah, it like, is one of the weirdest things. I love the poster, the, just, the weird right. orange, orange cat thing. Furry, it, yeah. If you don't know what we're talking about, seriously, just look watch the trailer you will get enough of the weirdness from the trailer alone so. like yeah. to understand yeah. how bizarre it is but yeah. i'm gonna go with we don't like house I, it's house not soon. good yeah okay uh bobette georgie writes Bob and says, weird this movie house and saturday the 14th are always recalled at the same time in my brain <laughs> and boycott liberal hollywood writes in and says because <laughs> I yeah, said, I like this guy. I knew it. I knew it. It's one of like Travis's. Uh, okay, so I wrote on a Facebook post and yep. said, That's "How it. come Hollywood doesn't make, or why don't they make movies like this anymore?" Referencing House because the House is a comedy horror movie and it's funny. And he says, he or she, because Hollywood's only role now is to be used as propaganda by the ruling elite. Entertainment, for entertainment's sake, has ceased to exist. That's this is Bobette. No, That's, this is, oh, this boycott, is boycott liberal Hollywood. Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. This sounds like a pretty, then, cause it's pretty much, together. Because it is pretty much true. I mean, like, this is like the key master and the gatekeeper talking to you. I know. It's pretty you much true, man. Up. That's why I have a hard time watching modern day movies because it's like I just see the message and it's just like, oh, Jesus Christ. I man, get it. put forth an alternative uh, just idea because it may be right that that's the truth. But okay, Slither, which mm. we would say is probably a, a movie that's entertainment for entertainment's sake. Mm hmm. Uh, the budget on that movie, fifteen million dollars. The really? gross, seven million dollars. Uh, yep. Drive Angry, a yep. movie that we might say is uh, maybe not a, a comedy movie or a comedy, We're but funny. it's That's definitely an entertainment piece. Budget, fifty million dollars. Domestic gross, ten million dollars. Fifty million dollars. So, Shot in three D. Yeah. Jesus. So basically, <laughs> Hollywood will make a movie if there is an audience for it, mm-hmm. and there is no audience audience for the horror comedy yeah. except for like us mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> and apparently the woods we... was a big was a pretty big hit it was a sleeper hit i think like yeah especially because it was delayed for two years yeah i mean i, I mean right, people that like it either like it or don't like it yeah. i mean it's one of those kind of middle of the road movies it definitely wasn't an accident it got released the month before avengers came out like mm. right that yeah, was the, the tie-in yeah joss whedon yeah but yeah if we go support these movies well they're not making them right now but then mm. they'd make more mm-hmm. of them but if you go see transformers Four. Right, yeah, they're gonna make that. a transformer. I'm a strong believer in but voting with your wallet. They're going to put their message in Transformers. That's the, that's what he's talking about. They're going to put the like, you know, 
Like, don't you think transgenders should use our bathrooms? I mean, they're going to say that in Transformers because, like, right, you especially know. with the transgender transgender. <laughs> yeah. yeah. like, oh, like, that's going to be oh, like, there you go. yo, Jesus. That's, that's where it is. Just All vote right. with your wallet. So, on the Monster <laughs> you know? Squad, Holly. Holly writes Holly. in and says, I'm so bummed I won't be there for the Monster Squad. I've never seen it. I hope to hear from our listeners about it when I get back. Have fun. I miss you guys. Thanks, Holly. Drink your oh, beer. Yeah. Uh, Jacob Kotner writes in and says, love, 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 exclamation point for the Monster Squad. Loss writes in and says, I absolutely loved, in all caps, the Monster Squad. I used to watch it every year as a kid, and I look forward to it every year as an adult. So Colin got on Twitter, made a bunch of fake accounts, and wrote into the freak show. No, I bet other people write this about our movies. He just doesn't read it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, fuck those guys. This is where they are having this reality check where, yes, people actually love the Monster Squad. Don't worry, folks. You said I the same thing about Halloween 3. I don't uh, fucking believe you. I don't fucking believe no, you. I said no. that. It's there totally are true. Who love that movie. I don't believe it. And Dom Cree writes Dom. in possibly Wait twice. Wait a second. Yeah, I thought. Anyway, we'll Dom, talk about that later. Dom, Dom Cree writes in and says, I loved watching this movie. Not, the not so PC comments from the kids might upset a few people, but it captures Man, exactly what kids are people. like, regardless of what people want to believe. I, don't, I think that's how adults are like now. Yeah, <laughs> we're just no one does it on TV. That's all it is. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and kids have always been that way. Uh, while a pretty basic <laughs> story, it was a great old school kids on an adventure movie that you wish they would still make these days. I say check out Stranger Things. Super right? eight. agree. Uh, mm-hmm. Five ruptured wolf nards out of five. Yeah. And yes, I guess that means that wolfmen do have five nards. Ha! Thanks for the awesome podcast. You but I do have to ask if we get another Travis cover of the Monster Squad theme rap, like in the <laughs> Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah. so. I don't know it. I don't know it. I know it tells the story. Yes. <laughs> We're the Monster Squad. We're no, the Monster Squad. We got paid twelve dollars to record the song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, thanks for writing it. And again, <laughs> yeah. folks, uh, thanks, you can get us on at Sat Freak Show on Twitter. We had a good, that was a good mailbag. It was. Facebook.com. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of pissed at Dom, though. He stole my wrap up. Freak show. Uh, he no, stole so my wolf nards out of wolf nards. Uh, ruptured comment. wolf nards. Uh, now you got to think up something else. Nah, really quick. No, I'm going to skip it. You Creatures can't. stealing Twinkies. Okay, I'll uh, give yeah. it. <laughs> well, we're going to do wrap ups next. Do you hear that sound? Oh, my God. That's the sound of our butler lurk. Here he comes. Oh, Jesus. Don't make eye contact. The hour has come, sirs. All right, Thank Jesus. You, Lurk. All right, so now it's time for the wrap-ups where we each get to sound off what we thought about the movie. I know how this is going to go, but starting with Travis. Yeah, I just don't like this movie just because I like, I mean, I've always liked the Wolfman and the Creature from the Black Lagoon. Those are my universal guys. Um... And it sucks that we can't really use Creature from the Black Lagoon in anything. Almost in any Halloween special, any sort. It's always some rip-off, like, generic Creature from the Black Lagoon. Um, But more so, I just feel like the movie is... It's just trying to get some magic from the Goonies. I mean, I would say the Goonies even more than the Explorers. I'm sure even the Explorers is much like Monster Squad. It's more of a cult-like, like, huge fan following but specifically Goonies. And I don't know if it's just because I think the modern day monsters like Leatherface, Pinhead, and I just think they would have been more prominent at this time. Or, because I mean, like, God, I might have even seen this as a kid and had a nightmare about it. I'm not positive. Uh, But I only remember Dracula and shit being scary when I was super little, like baby, like toddler little, you know, and then, yeah. yeah, once you, yeah, because I mean, come on, you know, some things are just too cartoony and like, you know, and, uh, so I don't know, this movie just never did it for me. I, you know, I, I recognize how a lot of people really liked it. You know, the Wolfman's got nards is on t-shirts and fucking beanies and shit and, and I mean, I, and I do suck it up to the fact that, you know, people just, I mean, they do like monsters. I mean, half of my movies I show on this podcast, I'm like, there's a monster in it. Did you see it? It's a good movie. <laughs> 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 but like in this, I think this movie would have that. It, but I think it's just missing too much of the story. We have the kid story, 
but we have no monster story. Like, period. We just have monsters showing up every 15 minutes to have lightning flash. Dracula does something to bring about another monster, really just to get the other four monsters together or whatever. Yeah. And then it's just like, then she, I mean, so that's just my problem is you can't have a movie where your protagonists are the only interesting thing. The antagonist has to be interesting. It has to be. The bad guy is what makes every fucking movie. If you, The challenge has to be good. The goal has to be good. And it's not even a bad idea that they use, like, basically a MacGuffin for the, uh, you know, the medallion, the shiny thingy. Which, you know how fucking anti-religious this movie is? This The fucking kids wouldn't even get a fucking cross? It's like, if you know Dracula's real, wouldn't you be carrying around a cross? And not just garlic pizza? It's not just. There must pizza. have been a shit ton of garlic on that pizza for how yeah, bad it burned. Lot. Right? I was a like, do you have to make Dracula eat it? Like, yeah. no, it's so delicious. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. There's so there's just things about this movie that don't make sense to me, and I know I mean call it, it's a kid, man, but I don't think kids movies are that fucking dumb. I don't think they're written that. Like I like a lot of kids movies, a lot of them, and they're not written that stupid. You know, it, that's when adults that are writing for kids. You know, that's when they're thinking, like, eh, you know, they're little kids. You don't want to use big words. Or if you do, have one of the characters, like, tell the audience what the word means. It's like like Sesame Street or something. And I just think that be little... Uh, we always talk about how children's animation and shit is good when they talk above the audience. That way the kid gets a little bit more intrigued and becomes smarter. Not, not like, mm -hmm. not talking down all the time to just, you know, whatever. So... I think that's why this movie never did a lot for me. Um, just because I can feel how it's not really, it doesn't respect its audience. It's just, you know, you're dumb kids. We're just going to put a fat kid in it. Like the, just like the Goonies group, you know, you got to have a fat kid. You got to, you know, you always have to have the fat kid. Like, actually, yeah. that's what made Stranger yeah, Things. Like, I'm mm -hmm. not going to ruin Stranger Things wasn't, for you. No, he wasn't fat enough, though. For it doesn't age. matter. He made the group. I was like, I don't buy this group until until he, like, talked about it. I was like, I like this. Like, he makes it. He's the heart of the group. Which one? <laughs> The fat kid with the missing teeth. He's not. The, he's not fat. I wouldn't consider he's him the fat. A, but he's kid. But the Dustin, fat kid. Dustin of, is of the them. best one. Yeah. yeah, he is. But Dustin's <laughs> the best one. But like, I don't know. So I just, yeah, I don't know. This movie just doesn't do anything for me. Um, not even with the monsters or anything. Just because the monsters have nothing to do. They're almost like a non-part of the story in a weird way. Like there could be no monsters in this. It could be just Dracula. It really doesn't matter. You know. So I don't know. I don't like it. But that's my personal thing. So <laughs> if you want to fight me, let's uh, <laughs> write us in and we'll fight verbally. <laughs> <laughs> no, I no verbally nothing. We're gonna duke this out. Oh, mano shit. y mano. Uh, Colin's address is uh, no, what are you two two about? two five. Mockingbird Lane. Yeah. The next month we'll all fight about the fucking remake Wolfman. <laughs> Once and for all, coming the next final week. showdown. That's, that's like a big gang fight. Right? Oh, dude, happen. we'll record that. Like, we won't even. It won't even be a review. It'll just be like verses. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I don't. I mean, it's hard. For, like, I. I guess I would recommend it because I think people would like this type of movie, or they'd get a kick out of it. Whatever. I personally just fucking don't give a shit about it. I've got explorers. There you go. Um, I've never had a relationship with the Universal Monsters, really. I missed, um, back when they were popular earlier in the day, and then, um, yeah, I never, I never really saw anything that would get me to, uh, get me interested in them. So, for this movie is like, have you watched any of the movies? Of course not. Just, All right. what? Okay, just yeah. the ones right. you've showed me. I don't know, so I haven't got Stella me, Frank. Gotcha. But, but uh, I have no there interest you go, in listener. that. Just saying. <laughs> but I have no interest in it. Like it's just it didn't catch me. And if you were, I think, kind of in my same situation, you wouldn't either. Like you were born at the right time. Like that's I mean, that has a lot to do with it. It's what you grow up with, it's what you see first that, you know, kind of sticks with you and catches your interest. I never had that with these guys. Um it is kind of fun seeing them all together. I like when you, you know, you get the super group together. You get all you know, that's why the Avengers are cool, because you get everybody with their special abilities. Um, everybody comes together. But this movie, it's this one's a weird one because this something happened somewhere and it feels like it's in the editing where something messed up. Um, but this movie does, I think, exist in its its best in just its scenes. 
because it's got some like really good scenes and some good moments um, that I really enjoyed. But that's where it's all at. Like as a whole, it's it's something else. It's uh, it's it's a weird movie. Um, but definitely in its scenes, like Colin or like Travis was saying, I think people would get a kick out of it for that. I don't think it makes a good whole movie, but I think there are uh, small enough scenes and elements in this movie. Um, enough to be enjoyable, I think. Um, I recommend it. I think people would get a kick out of this. Uh, I give it a 2.5 out of 5. I have no... Uh, no, he stole oh, my arts. He stole oh, my arts. Oh. He stole my arts. No, you stole his <laughs> rating system. He stole... <laughs> oh, my arts. So. We're giving it to Dom so, Creed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I give it a pass. So I actually have do have a really like well established relationship with the Universal Monsters. Like, There's something I grew up with and they're very like near and dear to me. So I think that if you have that groundwork or if you saw this as a child, you would enjoy it. However, if you don't care about the Universal Monsters, you didn't see this as a child, there's nothing for you to connect to with this. Um, I th- I think that like all the things I found the most interesting like had the shortest amount of screen time. Like if this honestly, if this movie would have been just Rudy going around fucking shit up with monsters, I'm on board a hundred percent. Like I think that all the best scenes or all the things that like the connective tissue for the plot were left on the cutting room floor, unfortunately. And I don't think you can hold Shane Black or Fred Decker responsible for that. That's a studio decision. I think I think they probably saw dailies and were like, "This isn't working. This isn't working," and kept trimming it down. So I feel like this is a victim of the studio system, if anything. I think it's definitely worth a watch and it's fun, but don't go into it expecting it to be like a warm blanket of nostalgia because if you don't connect to either the Universal Monsters or seeing this movie as a child originally, there's no nostalgia there for you because it's so short as it is and the plot is so like staccatoed that it's, you're not going to connect to anything. I would give it like two and a half out of five Adidas product placements. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I think the Monster Squad is so fucking cool. I think that's like the the primary overriding uh, sensation that I have with it. The idea, but again, this cool. is he just uh, wants to be in the Monster Squad. Yeah, I want to be in the Monster Squad, right? Yeah, I mean, I want to be part of the Ghostbusters. I want to be in yeah. the Monster Squad. I think that's actually that was part of their advertising, right? What? You know who to call when you have ghosts. Who do you call when you have monsters? Oh, oh piggy, monsters. piggy, wow. on that. Yeah, Shit. I definitely would have like rammed that down his throat there earlier. Um. Yeah, you mentioned one good movie to make you go see. <laughs> I think you know, uh, as a horror aficionado, you know, you dive deep and you go back and you know you discover the universal horror monsters because this is the foundation of like the history of the genre that I love and the characters that I love, and so you know I've had a, uh, a re- you know I guess relationship with that <laughs> mythology for. I like how everybody keeps saying how <laughs> yeah. they have I know, personal right. relationships like, with relationship. the monsters. It's it so is. funny, but it yeah. is. I know because they like it somehow because they <laughs> we are that little girl before, in this movie. Yeah. You know that the, long before you were around. You know it's like it feels like they've been there longer somehow. They're mm-hmm. like you know. I mean, I know that, like, you know, you know, it's the same way that superheroes have, too. You know, it's like they, the idea the of the Captain America has been There's around forever. Yeah. It's like the closest thing America has to mythology. Like It is. Our superheroes yeah. and monsters yeah. mm-hmm. is ours. Yeah. yeah. They're and ancient then Greek gods. I like the idea of the team up. I like the idea of, you know, you're seeing, and you know, someone trying to redesign them for, you know, uh, I don't. It's not like they're updating them for the modern day. They're just using modern day technology or from the '80s to do mm-hmm. like what I assume it, they those guys thought. Like I'm going to put my personal stamp on these creatures. We were talking earlier. Like everybody else has uh, model kits and toys and all that. And I don't know that there is like a licensing arrangement for the Monster Squad. Maybe there is. Maybe there's Monster Squad. Uh, hmm. You know that you're saying but there's Wolfman got Nards T-shirts yeah. and oh, Stephen yeah. King rules T-shirts, but. Are there actually like those Stan Winston designs? Can you collect them? And, Not you that know? I've ever seen. Uh, I've been looking at horror toys like, but this a is lot the, for the past like 10, 15 years. And that uh, oversight then, if that's the case, is why in, in this day and age and market, this movie isn't connecting with a newer audience because they're not going to the conventions and seeing, you know, all the the Monster Squad memorabilia. So the only way that you can see it is that, like if you remember seeing this in the 80s, you've grown up with it and now you love it. And, you know, if you show it to, you know, uh, you know, someone, uh, your kids or whatever, who don't have the same experiences and, you know, it's not going to connect in the same way. I mean, I agree that like the story plot of this movie is uh, 
I think it suffers attention deficit disorder. You know, it's like we have to basically just, it's, it's very threadbare. The characterizations are very threadbare. But in spite of that, and again, this is probably fueled by nostalgia, the scenes that work in this movie, like, work really well for me. You know, I mean, like, they pack, like, even tonight watching them is like, they have, like, this charge because I think, like, the they're done with a professionalism, I guess, that, and I think a reverence also for the characters. It, you know, the other time I saw the monster mashup was Van Helsing, right? Where they got all the universal monsters mm -hmm. together. And that movie just like spiraled into this. I mean, it had like a budget and it was able to do all this stuff. And it just like, <laughs> you know, it started out kind of promising. And like there are moments in there. But then it just like falls apart and spirals into this gigantic turd toward the end. There's moments that I like in Van Helsing, but, uh, and maybe I would have liked that if I was 10 years old, you know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think this was my monster team up, you know, in color, you know, because the old ones were all black and white. And I enjoy the performances. I like the kids. I uh, like the monsters aside from the only one I really don't like is Dracula, which is the one you have to like because he's the <laughs> our only articulate monster who's like, you know, mm -hmm. directing the action. But uh, that wouldn't be my Dracula. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> you know, that's uh, the, the name of my band is That's My Dracula. That's my Dracula. <laughs> that's, a good, uh, that's a good sitcom. Yeah. From the 50s. <laughs> yeah. So it's not. But what did I do? <laughs> Again? Uh... <laughs> I told you, no garlic on the pizza. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's not a very sharply written movie. It's cool to go back and look at it, I think, as, like, as a piece of uh, film history, just, you know, knowing, well, at least Shane Black and where he went and, you know, seeing the collaboration of, like, you know, I mean, if you follow the special effects, you know, both on the makeup side and on the visual effects side, you know, Richard Endland did the, uh, the visual effects. So this is, like, the guy who did Ghostbusters and Back to the Future and all that. You know, you can tell because it's his 80s fucking vortex. I love that fucking <laughs> 80s, vortex. 80s vortex. And uh, the 80s, you know, lightning, you know, whatever, the strike and stuff. Yeah. That's all, you know, Richard Edlund's uh, visual style. So, I mean, that kind of stuff I love. And so, you know, I mean, that's why I love the Monster Squad. Would I recommend it to you? I think if you're a fan of Stranger Things, which is a, you know, as we're recording this, a cultural phenomenon, at least in the United States, uh, and it's a kind of a kid's adventure or boy's adventure movie. It inspired me to actually go back and rewatch the monster squad and super eight and ET. And, you know, I mean, I know Goonies no is obviously like, I haven't ever crossed paths with that movie. You going to bring it to the free, yeah, show? Or the free show? Yeah. You won't like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that has not stopped most of us before. <laughs> yeah. So I guess that was stranger things was what inspired me to go back to the monster squad thinking like, like this is one of those similar kind of, you know, things. And I think time is kind of, maybe not been kind to it, but it is, I think still a lot of fun. And I think there are still like a lot of fans out there that appreciate it. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's just cool. It is cool to be part of the monsters to be in the goddamn club. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> so there you go. That's the monster squad. So next week on the Saturday night freak show, Travis is going to be picking the movie. Travis, what are we going to be watching next week? We're going to watch Dude Bro Party Massacre Part 3. <laughs> Let me repeat that for you. Dude Bro Party Massacre Part 3. <laughs> there, don't worry. There is no Dude Bro Party Massacre 1 or 2. No. It's like you a, don't have to get caught It's like an airplane horror movie. It's like a horror genre, like airplane type with of Patton comedy. Oswald. With Patton Oswalt and a bunch of like internet oh, like dudes. All right. Yeah. He's the only star. The rest of the guys are like That's YouTube fine. people. Did he write or just act? Just act, I think. Ooh, okay. I think it's these other guys. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah. it, it looks yeah. like a lot of fun. We earlier we watched uh, sorority or slumber party massacre. That's what I was going to say. That's like the real life. So this is kind of the <laughs> yeah. the parody of it, where a bunch of guys get together and have a party in their underwear, Wonderful. and then they get attacked by Motherface. <laughs> Oh yeah, Motherface. <laughs> Mother trailer. That's right. brilliant. <laughs> All right, so that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show Fiends, and until then, the basement is going dark. <laughs> <laughs>